Hey, this is Alex from Android Central, and today we're taking a look at the new Intel-powered Motorola Razr I. So here it is, the Motorola Razr I. On the outside, it's almost identical to the Droid Razr M, with the obvious exception of this Intel branding around the back. We've got a 4.3 inch device here with an aluminium frame screen. Uh, the rest of the phone is constructed out of matte plastic, though we do have this Kevlar back panel, just like the other Razr phones. Motorola is making a big deal out of the edge-to-edge -edge display on the Razer Eye, and unlike earlier Razer models, uh, there's no big obnoxious bezel surrounding the screen here. It's pretty much just the actual display itself and then the metal trim on either side of it. We do have a little bit of dead space down below though. We've got this blank area where carrier branding would normally go, so it's a bit of a shame to see that there. On the whole though, Motorola hasn't changed up its design language too much in the Razer Eye. still got a very industrial look to it, though it is a lot less bulky than phones like the original Razer and the Atrix HD. On the left edge of the phone we've got this clip out area for micro SIM and micro SD card slots. We've got our own card in there right now, but uh, there aren't any provided with the phone. Moving along we've got micro USB port, uh, no HDMI out on this, uh, unlike the first gen Razer phones. Moving up top we've got a 3.5mm headphone jack, and on the right edge is where you'll find power, volume and dedicated camera keys. Above the Kevlar area on the back there's an 8 megapixel rear camera with LED flash, and that's paired with a basic 0.3 megapixel front facer. Motorola doesn't have a great track record with phone cameras, but we've been pleasantly surprised with the camera on this thing. It's very fast to start as you can see here, and even faster to capture images. You've also got burst mode and HDR mode, although there's no panoramic capability. And we were told at the launch event that a lot of the camera performance has to do with the optimizations that have been done for Android on the Intel platform. So the Razer Eye is running a 2GHz Intel Atom CPU with hyperthreading. And what that means is you've got a single core CPU, but two threads running on it. Intel claims this setup gives better real-world performance and that it's also done a lot to optimize Android in general and Motorola's apps in particular for its architecture. So we're running Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich on here. Uh, eventually the Razer Eye will be upgraded to Jelly Bean, but the reason it's not on here out of the box is because Intel's only just completed its port of Jelly Bean for Atom CPUs. The Intel chip in here is backed up by a gig of RAM and around 6 gigs of internal storage, though that's expandable for my microSD card. On the whole, we've been pretty impressed with the performance of the Razer Eye. In general use, it's fast, smooth, and very responsive, and it stacks up favorably compared to the Galaxy Nexus running Jelly Bean. Uh, gaming performance too is decent, and we haven't run into any performance or compatibility issues in the handful of games that we've tried. There are a few apps which don't play nicely with the Atom CPU though, and one of those is Google Chrome, uh, which fails to install on the Razer Eye. Motorola says there'll be an Intel-friendly update to Chrome around about the time the phones release. We should also talk about the display a little. It's a QHD Super AMOLED panel, which on paper is the same as the first generation Razors, but in reality there are a few substantial differences. The Razer Eye is much brighter, much more vivid, better in direct sunlight, and there's nowhere near as much discoloration in low brightness settings. That said, it's still a low resolution Pentel display, so you're going to get a bit of artifacting in places, especially around text. In terms of software, what you got on the Razer Eye is pretty much identical to any other modern Motorola phone. Visually, it's pretty close to vanilla Android, you'll notice the on-screen buttons down below, though there is quite a bit of added functionality. For example, on the home screen, you can scroll all the way to the left and you'll get this handy quick settings page. Scroll all the way to the right and you'll get the option to add more home screens. There's also this favorite section in the app drawer, and that gives you the option to tap this button up top and you can check a few favorite apps to pin them here for quick access. You also get some useful Motorola apps, including an interactive guide, smart actions, which lets you automate certain tasks, uh, such as muting notifications when you're charging at night, or turning off non-essential functions when the battery's low. And we're happy to report that unlike the Verizon Razr M, there's absolutely no bloatware in our Razr Eye review unit. Motorola hasn't really reinvented the wheel here, it's stuck with Google Play Music for music playback, and included a vanilla gallery and video editing app. So on the whole, the Razr Eye is a fast, well-specced, mid-range device from Motorola. Ultimately, how successful it will be will depend on price. Some of the pre-order prices we've seen have been a little on the high side. But if the UK networks can offer it on contract at reasonable rates, it could be pretty successful. That's about it for our quick look at the Motorola Razr Eye. Be sure to check Android Central for the rest of our hands-on coverage.